Uh, my name is Wendy Duffy, and I am the president and founder of Resonate Music Licensing and Management. And um, we've got a studio in East Nashville. And um, yeah, we've been running since late 2014. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And and so you come from a background of before before Resonate. You you've been doing music licensing for for a while. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. so, so I started a music licensing that? division over at IV Music. Okay. Um, yeah. They were primarily a company that focused on audio branding, yeah. um, sonic branding, and so music licensing and music supervision were some of the core competencies, but they didn't have a licensing division. So okay. I had a real interest in music and, and writing. I had a background as a singer-songwriter, and so um, I just took it, you know, I took the opportunity and so, you know, so to speak, ran with it. Um, yeah. The owner of the company at the time was like, if it's something you want to do, Let's do it. Do it. Yeah. Cool. So talk to me about the studio and, and, and how you're running that and and what, you know, how you're participating with the artists and, sure. and contributing. That's awesome. Cool. Um, so one of the things that we do, I think, that's a little different than a typical third-party licensing company is, you know, because I have a background in management and branding, a lot of what I like to do is help develop artists essentially yeah. in their core competency which is basically their brand and their yeah. sonic their sonic brand and so i think that as music licensing opportunities have increased over the years obviously it's become a main revenue stream for artists it was about identifying sonic brands that already exist okay. and helping them create music emotionally that fits well for licensing yeah um not writing to brief not directing the car at one thing specifically, but okay. looking at emotional brands, like archetypes, if you're yeah, familiar with yeah, that. Yeah. So what I hear the most is like what's happening in marketing, what's happening in, in promotion and things like that, especially as it pertains to film and television. Yeah. And you hear how does that connect with different artists that I've met along the path. Um, so. Basically, it's been identifying those brands and those sonic brands that already exist and then helping them steer the ship. Yeah. You know, it's it's already their sound, yeah. but it's about helping them develop music emotionally that's going to be well suited for licensing. Cool. That's mm -hmm. amazing. One of the reasons I do what I do is that I really believe that um, independent artists can steer the ship yeah. as long as possible. Um, if they're smart and they choose to think about their business as a business, yeah. um, you know, I'm not against publishing and label deals. I think they're great when the time is right. Sure. Some publishing deals are not good for right. independent artists. It depends on what your goals are. Right. Um, so you know. in, in the music industry, we talk a lot about gatekeepers. Yeah. I feel like some of that, some of it's becoming a little bit looser do you feel like artists can 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 do the same thing? Do you feel like it has opened up to a place where an artist can do the research as well and start to pitch their songs to sync and licensing? Is that advised? Um, I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, and I think that the reason they will have a lot of trouble with that is that you have to understand music supervisors people at trailer houses, creative directors, editors, producers, I mean, the list goes on. So many people touch something that's creative at one yeah. point or another. Quite frankly, the music supervisor is also a gatekeeper yeah. um, you know, to a lot of people that they're answering to. If you even knew how many people have to say yes to something, yeah. by the time it actually hits the air or anything, it's, um, it's very discouraging. Yeah. Um, and. It doesn't discourage me. It can be discouraging for people when they actually see how daunting that can be. But for me, the reason why it would be, it wouldn't be advantageous for an artist to do that because um, sometimes it can take years. Yeah, okay. Um, number one. Um, number two, which goes right hand in hand with number one, is that that is not the best way for an artist to be spending their time. Yeah. Number three, they don't have the kind of number one roster success or any kind of like pitch strategy per se. Yeah. Um, that would be like telling a, an artist to start pitching themselves to publications. Yeah. It would be not a good use of their time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, there are people in this business that I have 
pitched music to for years. Yeah. Years before anyone responded to me. And a lot of times it's like, those people are looking for a proven track record. Those yeah. people are looking for, you know, some of those people will be the last ones to kind of catch on to working with you. And, you know, it's because they're getting 400 emails from publishers, labels, third party licensing companies. I mean, you know, if you just start pitching yourself, I don't even know if they're ever going to even read it. Yeah. I mean, you know.